Steve Zalusha. Last Saturday night in Tokyo, the 10th round was heard around the world, but there are parallels to Mike Tyson's upset and the one that took place 30 years ago. Before Tyson came along, the youngest heavyweight champ was a guy named Floyd Patterson. And like Tyson, his mentor was Customato. And like Tyson, Patterson was the victim of one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. He was knocked down by Ingmar Johansson. Patterson, well, he lost the title in June of 1959 in his fifth title defense. He was 24 at the time. Tyson is 23 and was putting his belt on the line for the 10th time. Johansson was a 7-1 to one underdog on the evening of June 26, 1959. As for Buster Douglas, he was a 42-1 to one underdog at one betting parlor. Charlie Steiner both, uh, spoke with Patterson on Saturday and asked him if Tyson underrated Buster Do Douglas. Do you suppose, looking back on your fight with Johansson and the way you may have taken Ingemar somewhat lightly, Tyson went into this fight not respecting Buster Douglas at all? Uh, yes, I think that's obvious. I'm, I'm pretty sure he took the guy lightly. The same as I took Ingemar Johansson the first fight. Uh, I figured it would just be enough, a matter of time. And uh, I wound up getting up seven times off the canvas. So what I'm saying is uh, I feel that Tyson felt this was just another, another fight, another victim. When you were preparing for the first Johansson fight, were you as focused as you could have been, or even from the time you signed for the fight, ah, I'm going to beat up this Swedish guy that nobody's ever heard of anyway, no problem. And, and do you not work as hard, and are you not as you know, focused? Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, any fight, any time I climbed in the ring, I worked very, very hard. I was in very, very good con condition physically for that fight. But mentally, I wasn't, in the sense that, you see, when I get in the ring, I have to have fear. Without fear, I'm scared. Because when I have fear, I know I'm going to be all me. I'm going to react properly. I'm going to take advantage of every opportunity. But if I get in the ring and I have no fear, then I'm scared because I know I'm not going to be all me. When I fought Inga by the first time, there was no fear whatsoever. I constantly told myself, this guy can hit, he can hit, make yourself afraid, but I couldn't make myself afraid. But the mere fact that there were so many people, and I'm talking about people all over the world, not only in the United States, all over the world, that wanted me to win so badly, that's why I felt very, very badly, see. And I went into hiding, believe it or not, after that fight. Uh, in fact, I uh, wore a mustache and beard, and no one recognized me, you know, for quite some time. I mean, it's a natural feeling. When you let that many people down, it's a natural feeling to feel ashamed. Where did you go after the fight was over? Well, I went home, and uh, I wouldn't leave the house. In fact, uh, my wife had asked me, uh, and uh, she was very angry because I um, wouldn't didn't take her anywhere, so she was saying, why don't you take me to the movies, or you're never going anywhere, you're always in the cellar, why don't you do this and that and the other. So finally, I decided, this is about two weeks after the fight, I decided, okay, I'll take you to the movie. So I waited for nighttime, we were going to the movie, and what do I see up on the mall, okay? Pallas and Johansson fight. So I mean, you try to come back in the car, she was furious. <laughs> I got back in the car, so I don't want to see that. <laughs> So much, of course, is made of the agony of defeat. Where does that stem from? Is that a personal thing? Well, when I climbed in the ring for the second fight, there was no guarantee that I was going to win the fight. I have never told anybody I'm definitely going to win the fight. A lot of people say we expect you to win, but I never really thought to myself that you're going to definitely win the, win the fight. Ingemar had said an awful lot of derogatory things about me throughout the year. I didn't know Ingemar Johansson then. So I got to the point where I was so angry at what he did that I said to myself that the, the night of the fight, I went to the bathroom, I looked in the mirror, I said, you will probably come back the loser. But there's one thing you can guarantee. He's going to have difficulty raising his hand in victory. That I could guarantee. In the process, I won. So you, you, were, you managed to have two emotions going, fear and anger. Fear and anger, yes. 
Uh, and when they work together, let me tell you, I mean, I've always had fear, but never the anger. But with the anger, with the fear, can almost make you turn into a murderer. <laughs> uh, I'm only kidding. Not quite. Well, not quite, but I do know that I couldn't wait to hit him. Did, did this all happen too soon for Tyson? Too much too soon? Uh, yes. Too much too soon. But somehow I just feel, see, I've always felt sorry for him because when Cus, especially when Cus passed away, I really felt sorry for him because I knew then that, all the, that there were many people out there uh, that would try to get involved with him, try to lead him, try to guide him and all that uh, just for the sake of getting money, you know. Uh, and I really felt sorry for him. And as you can see, uh, based on the lifestyle he's undertaken, if Cus was still alive, this never would have happened. What was the hold that Cus had on Mike? Because it seems that Mike doesn't do a very good job of listening to anybody. He Yet he to listened Cus. to Cus. Yes. He had respect for, I don't know, Cus demanded respect. I've known Cus since I was 14 years old. And I have always had respect for him. I have never disrespected him because of the kind of man he was. He demanded respect in his own unique way of acting. You had to respect him. And I would say that uh, Tyson, too, although Tyson may not show respect for anybody else, but I know he had respect for Cus. If you had a chance to sit down with Mike Tyson now and tell him anything, what would it be? Go all the way back all the way back to the beginning and think about how you got to where you are now. That's all. And once you see, you tend to forget. We forget yesterday. Uh, we forget that <clears throat> we may have slept on the street, ate from garbage cans, uh, stole food and did various things. We forget all of that once we become wealthy. That's why I keep it vividly alive in my mind now, where I came from. Because when I remember where I came from, I can never have a big head, if you know what I mean. So this is mainly what I would tell Tyson. So I'm pretty sure his background was very similar to mine. Go all the way back to the beginning and take it step by step and bring it up to today. And by doing that, you'll know which way to go. I think people are panicking with Mike Tyson. Yes, he did lose, but he lost to a fighter who had a perfect game plan to beat him. Let me see Tyson after the next bout. If he loses that one, yes, then he should go all the way back and start over again. He's still the best boxer in the game. He's got a year, though, to wait at this point. If they fight in September, he's going to have to sit and watch and wait and maybe learn something about himself in the intervening year. Still to come, those two minutes that seem so much bigger. Plays of the week, but next... Former